We're going to now do our sixth and final journal entry, and it has to do with depreciation expense. Now, what I'm going to teach you here is just basics. We have a whole chapter nine that covers depreciation. So just don't be too confused. Now, on this one, I'm always going to give you the amount. You don't have to calculate anything. Again, we have a whole chapter nine that covers this. So this, we're going to talk about fixed assets or plant assets. These are things that are physical and have a long life. And we're talking about land, buildings, and equipment. And what happens when you own these type of things over time, you're going, you're going to decrease their usefulness, and that's called depreciation. So over time, they will depreciate. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have a depreciation expense to keep track of the amount of depreciation that's happened. Now, what happens is I buy a piece of equipment, I put it, if I pay cash for it, I would credit my cash and debit my equipment account, which is an asset. But over time, we're going to record the depreciation expense, but we're never going to touch the actual equipment account. We're going to use an account called accumulated depreciation. Okay? Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account and it is attached to the equipment so for every asset that i own i will have a contra asset account for example oh, with the exception of land so if i buy equipment store equipment i will have a contra asset account called accumulate depreciation these are fixed assets the normal balances here are debits the normal balance here is our credits and whatever amount is in here will be subtracted from there. So I'll show you that in a minute, okay? But again, we have a whole chapter. Don't be too concerned about this, okay? Okay, so let's do the sixth and final adjusting journal entry. And it's called, I depreciate my office equipment depreciates $50 during December. So what's going to always happen is that you're always going to be given the depreciation and always, always, always you're going to debit depreciation expense for 50 and credit the accumulated depreciation for office equipment. Okay. And here's what I want to show you. I want to show you down here. So when I bought the office equipment for 1800, it goes here. Here's my expense. Here is the accumulated. So these two accounts are attached. Okay, these two accounts are attached. It's going to be this amount minus whatever's in here. Okay, the 1800 minus the 50 is what my actual office equipment is worth now, and it's called book value. So the book value is the cost of the asset minus whatever amount you have in the accumulated depreciation. Book value of the assets. Okay, so let's just go back. 1800 minus 50 would be book value of 1750. Next month in the month of January, I would do the exact same journal entry, then this would say 100, and then my book value would be 1700. And I would do that every month. Okay? So just to know, this is introducing you to book value. Again, if I did not do this entry, here's what it would happen to my books. My expenses would be understated, but my income would be overstated. This is just what is the effect if you leave this off. And finally, let me give you a summary of what we just did. Here are the unearned revenue accounts we did, the prepaid expenses, and, oh, actually, I think I'm missing a slide here. Hold on. Yeah, somehow I'm missing a slide there. There should be another slide. But anyway, let's take a look over here. Here's what the actual journal entries look like. Okay? Here's what they actually look like. Notice they're on, they're on the same general journal form you're working. I type in the word adjusting entries up here. Notice, let's talk about the rules. Do you see the word cash here? Rule number one, never involves cash. Rule number two, always dated the last day of the accounting period, whatever it is. And rule number three always involves an income statement account and a balance sheet account. Well, here we go. The expense is on an income statement. The supplies is on a balance sheet. Expense on the income statement. 
prepaid insurance is an asset on the balance sheet. Unearned rent on the balance sheet as a liability, rent revenue on the income statement. So our rules have been met. Now, once I journalize the adjusting entries, you're going to post them to ledgers. Okay, you're going to the same ledgers you were actually working on. And here's what they look like. So they're going to be highlighted in yellow. So all I'm doing is copying from that journal entry, copying or posting to the ledgers. Here's some more. Here's some more. And here's the rest of them. Every time I do a set of journal entries, so this is the second set of journal entries. These are called adjusted. There are only six. I told you exactly what they always are, what they're going to be. Every time I do journal entries, I need to do another trial balance for the sole purpose of making sure the debits and credits equaled. So I have what we call an adjusted trial balance. And here's what it looks like. So all this is is the balances from the four column ledger accounts at the end of the year after you post the adjusting entries. That concludes chapter three adjustments. This is probably going to be the easiest chapter for you.